Even the buzzing heart of Manhattan has now gone quiet. All non-essential businesses must stay closed and their workers must remain at home. It's part of a stringent set of rules coming into force as New York scrambles to contain its surge of coronavirus infections. Under pressure from state governors, President Donald Trump has now pledged to send help to the states worst affected by the outbreak, including New York. In addition to large quantities of supplies, I've also directed FEMA to supply the following. Four large federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for New York, eight large federal medical stations with 2,000 beds for California, and three large federal medical stations and four small federal medical stations with 1,000 beds for the state of Washington. The U.S. economy is also reeling from the virus. On Sunday, the U.S. Senate was expected but failed to reach a go-ahead for a trillion-dollar economic rescue package aimed at helping businesses and regular Americans. Democrats dismissed the bill, saying it was tilted toward helping large corporations. The legislation has many problems. At the top of the list, it includes a large corporate bailout with no protections for workers and virtually no oversight. Also very troubling in the bill were significant shortfalls of money that our hospitals, states, cities, and medical workers desperately needed. This is a public health crisis. It is inexplicable to skimp on funding to address the pandemic. With the Senate set to vote on the emergency bill again on Monday, authorities in New York urge the peak of the contagion is yet to come and warn of stricter measures if citizens fail to comply. The U.S. Senate has failed to pass an emergency aid bill, putting markets around the world on edge. Shares in Shanghai and Hong Kong lost around 4 percent each. Markets in Singapore are currently down 8 percent, while India's main index collapsed, losing over 12 percent. In Frankfurt, the market opened with heavy losses, too. The German DAX index down by almost 5 percent. And for a look at the markets in Europe, let's go now over to our correspondent in Frankfurt, Chelsea Delaney. Chelsea, the U.S. Senate is not yet signing off on a rescue package for the world's largest economy. How are investors in Europe reacting? Well, it's certainly a, a disappointment, and we're, we're seeing that reflected not just in U.S. stocks, but here in Europe as well. You mentioned this big slide in the DAX. Uh, investors had hoped that this would really fly through Congress quite quickly, but it remains uh, quite divided. Republicans and, and Democrats can't seem to, to find common ground on this. Democrats think this is much too focused on giving uh, liquidity and help to big businesses, and um, th they want more focus on, on helping out workers. Uh, the question now is, of course, how quickly they can come to an agreement. Uh, the Republicans have said they want to have another vote today. Democrats have said that they could propose their own bill, which would really lengthen the amount of time this could take to pass. And at the same time, people are losing their jobs. Businesses are facing bankruptcy. And the healthcare sector sector in the United States is increasingly overstrained. So economists and investors are just saying that every day counts, every moment counts, and they can't afford to lose more time on this. The aviation industry, Chelsea, has been hit particularly hard. What are you hearing from that sector? Well, I think the, the CEO of Lufthansa last week summed it up when he said the industry cannot survive um, with, without help right now. Uh, Lufthansa, for example, has had to cut about 95 percent of its capacity. That's really uh, being, being shared across many other airlines. They have seen a little bit of a bright spot because many are using these planes to, um, uh, they can use their empty planes now to ship cargo and things like medical supplies, but they are going to need state support, and I think we're going to see more on that coming forward. Chelsea, thank you very much. That was our markets reporter in Frankfurt, Chelsea Delaney.